Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us on TCM, where we're winding down the second night of our December spotlight on Movie Neighbors. Up next, the quintessential girl next door, Doris Day, sharing the screen with her definitive co-star, Rock Hudson, whose only resemblance to a typical boy next door in this movie was that he actually lived next door in a nearby apartment. From 1959, this is their first of three pictures together, Pillow Talk. The story is set in New York in the 1950s, long before the advent of cell phones, text change, and WhatsApp. No, seriously, what is app? The rage in the 1950s, immobile phones. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but hear me out. If you wanted to talk on the phone, you had to go into the room where the phone was and then sit down right next to it. You know, eventually the the cool people figured out that they could buy a long cord and you could walk around like holding the cradle on the base of the phone like a boss while you talked. Hey, I don't know if I can make your party, Esther. I got a lot going on. Not sure who Esther is in, in this story. In Pillow Talk, Day and Hudson share a party line. That's a single phone line shared among multiple subscribers. There weren't enough phone lines to give every household or apartment in the city its own line. Hudson plays a songwriter who monopolizes the phone, entertaining his endless romantic conquests. Day is a successful interior decorator, fuming because she can't get a call through. This quickly leads to a full-on battle of the sexes, complete with mistaken identities and plenty of clever and pretty tepid bedroom banter. Pillow talk. The movie represents a classic sex comedy from its era, which means rather counterintuitively, that even though the characters were preoccupied with sex, it was all talk and no action. This idea had been floating around Hollywood since the 1940s, going through multiple phases of on again, off again. Finally, Day's business manager slash husband, Marty Melcher, stepped in to buy the story. In addition to earning Day the only Oscar nomination of her career, Pillow Talk redefined her as Hollywood's wholesome sex symbol, a role she played to perfection for the rest of her career. But the real groundbreaking aspect of the film is Day's feminism. She is focused on her career, and she's good at what she does, a character more interested in work than meeting a man and getting married. Though Day and Hudson sparkle, Pillow Talk wouldn't have been nearly as successful without Tony Randall and Thelma Ritter, peerless supporting actors who got all the best lines and then crushed them. From 1959, directed by Michael Gordon, this is an Oscar winner for Best Original Screenplay. Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk is the first of three movies Rock Hudson and Doris Day made together, and their chemistry and genuine affection for each other made them just as popular with audiences as more prolific movie couples, Tracy and Hepburn, Powell and Lloyd, Bogart and Bacall. Fact is, Day and Hudson wanted to make more movies together, and they just never found a project they thought was good enough. But there are three movies, Pillow Talk from 1959, Lover Come Back from 61, Send Me No Flowers from 64, were enough to cement their legacy as one of the big screen's defining couples. Hudson doubted his comedy chops going into this production, but with some tutoring from Day and director Michael Gordon, he delivered an impressive performance, as you just saw. Hudson said he learned everything he needed to know about comedy from Day, who was, in his words, an actor's studio all by herself. Coming up, Burt Lancaster seeks solace in his neighbor's swimming pools in a 1968 drama based on a John Cheever story. The Swimmer is next on Turner Classic Movies.